In this video of the After Effects Fundamental series, you'll learn all about mats. Mats are similar to masks, but instead of being on the same layer, they're a separate layer. If you animate a layer with a mask on it, the mask will move with the layer. But since mats are separate layers, you can animate the layer without affecting the mat and vice versa. Plus, there are different types of mats that create different looks. Mats open up tons of possibilities for cutting things out, creating unique shapes, adding textures, and creating complex animations. This video covers all the basics, including how to create mats, different types of mats, and examples of when you might want to use them. You can download my project file to explore all the examples that I'll go through throughout the video. The link is below. Remember that I have these handy visual guides that go with all the videos in this After Effects Fundamentals series. First, you need to make sure that you can see the mat options in your timeline. So if you see this button here, toggle switches and modes, you can click on that to reveal the mat settings. Or you can also click on the second icon right here. If you still don't see the track mat option, you can right click on your menu bar right here and go to columns and make sure that modes is turned on. Also, it's important to note that for the 2023 version of Adobe After Effects, there was a big update that changed how the matte system works. So if yours looks different than mine, I would recommend if you can that you update your After Effects to the latest version. If for whatever reason you can't update After Effects, there are a few things in this video that won't work the same way for you and that you won't be able to do. The general concepts will be the same though. In this composition, I have a text layer, and I also have this design, which is just all of the animated elements from the artwork for this series. So what I want to do is have the design be masked within this text. So I'm going to use a mat for that. So on the design composition layer, I'm going to go under track mat, and with this dropdown, I'm going to choose the text layer, which is called mat. So the text layer is going to be the mat for this composition. So now my design composition is only showing up inside of that text layer. And it can still have all of its animation and anything else that's going on within that composition. I'm gonna undo that and just show you that there's one other way to create a mat. So with this little pick whip icon, you can just drag that to whichever layer you want the mat to be for your selected layer. So that was the same result as choosing it from the drop-down menu. Notice when I set the mat on the design composition to be that text layer, the text layer is automatically hidden, so it automatically turns off the eyeball. If your mat layer has the visibility turned off, it doesn't actually matter the layer order. It used to in older versions of After Effects, but now if you wanted, you could just hide this mat layer at the bottom of your layer stack or something. The difference between mats and masks are that masks are part of the layer, whereas mats are a separate layer. So this means that you could animate the mat or the matted layer or both independently. So I'm just going to move this text layer. So I'm just going to set some position keyframes. Let's make it kind of go from left to right. And you can see that the design layer is not moving. So unlike a mask, they're independent. And I could have the design layer doing its own thing. So maybe it's going in the opposite direction. So it's going from right to left. I'm gonna delete these keyframes on the design layer. If you wanted this to act more like a mask, you could always parent the design layer to the mat so that it follows it as it moves. So in a lot of cases, mats can be more flexible than masks. The kind of mat that we set in this example is an alpha mat. There's a little icon right here where you can switch between the different kinds of mats. We will talk about the other kind, which is a luma mat in a second. How an alpha mat works is that it looks at the transparency of the layer. So this text layer is solid on the letters, obviously, and then everything else outside of that is going to be transparent. 
If you're not sure which parts of your layer are transparent, you can go down to this little icon right here to toggle on the transparency grid. So this little grid just indicates that this area is transparent. So I'm going to unsolo this matte layer and hide it again. And you can see that it's just cutting out of the design everywhere that the matte is solid and everywhere that's transparent is going to be stay transparent. If you want to switch things up and invert this, you can just click this little icon right here to invert the matte. And now it's going to act like a cutout. If you have a background color for your composition, that's what's going to show through in your mat as long as you don't have this toggle transparency grid on. Or you could also create a background color and that's the color that's gonna show through. Or if you uninvert that, that'll be the background color. Now let's look at the other type of mat, which is a Luma mat. So in this composition, I have a text layer and I also have this image of my bamboo desk. What I wanna do here is use the bamboo as the mat. So on the text layer, I want the bamboo to be the mat. By default, it's gonna set an alpha mat, but if we click this button here, it'll change it to a luma mat. So this gives it a totally different effect. How luma mats work is that they look at the luminance of the layer. So in other words, they look at the brightness. So on this bamboo layer, it's looking for the light and dark values and using that to create the mat. Any part of the mat that's totally black will be 0% opacity, and any part of the mat that's totally white will be 100% opacity. Obviously, this bamboo image doesn't have any complete black or white, but one thing that we could do is go over to Effects and Presets and use an effect to adjust the brightness of the bamboo layer. So you could use like a levels effect or a curves effect. So I'm gonna drag curves onto the bamboo layer, and I'm just going to drag this line to change it up a bit. And you can see that I'm making this a little bit more dramatic. If you turn on the transparency grid, you can see that any of those areas that are really dark are more transparent. This is also an example of how you can combine effects with mats for more creative looks. You could also click this inverted button to flip the light and dark areas. Because luma mats are looking at the brightness of a layer, so black being the darkest and white being the brightest, you can use a gradient like this as a luma mat. So underneath here, I just have this text layer and I'm going to choose on the text layer to have the gradient be a luma mat. So right now it's a alpha mat. I'm gonna click this and make it a luma mat. Because I'm using a gradient as a luma mat, I'm still getting the color of the text layer which is that deep purplish blue, but it's matted to make it look like this. You can have multiple layers have the same matte, and this is one of the things that was new in After Effects version 2023. In this composition, I have a text layer again, and then all of these other layers like this brush texture and these little gradient shapes, I want to be masked inside of this text layer. So what I'm gonna do is select all of these other layers besides the text, and then in the drop-down menu or with the pick whip, you can just choose the mat. So they're all gonna share that same mat. And you can see that here. And these are just set to alpha mat. Another thing that you can do is you can turn on the visibility of the mat so that the color of that layer will show through. And you can also animate any of these layers. Another matte related button is the Preserve Underlying Transparency button, which is right here. This composition is the exact same as the previous example, but I'm going to show you how you can achieve the same effect with Preserve Underlying Transparency. So I'm going to select the gradient layers and the brushed texture layer, and then turn on the Preserve Underlying Transparency button. And I want these layers to be visible, so I'm just going to turn back on the eyeball. You can see that this creates the same look as this previous example where we used the same mat on all of these layers. So what this button does is makes the layer only visible wherever there is a solid shape below it. So if I had a background color on this, like a solid layer, it's not going to work because 
there's a solid behind everything in this composition. But right now I only have this text layer with parts of it solid and parts of it transparent. So anything that's above it that has preserved transparency on is going to be cropped into just where that layer is solid. So let's look at how preserve underlying transparency can be slightly different than using the same mat on all of the layers. So in the preserve underlying transparency composition, I'm just going to create a new shape and let's make the fill color that like purplish. And I'm just gonna drag out this shape on the top half of my layers. And then on this rectangle, I'm gonna turn on preserve underlying transparency. So you can see the effect that that has. But if I add another solid layer, so I'm gonna use another rectangle and just make like an underline. And let's bring this one to the bottom. So now this layer is adding to what's visible of these top layers that have preserved underlying transparency turned on. So hopefully this example illustrates the subtle differences between using the same mat and using preserved underlying transparency. In this composition, I have an animation of two circles overlapping. We can use mats to affect how the circles look when they overlap. So I'm gonna make circle two be a mat for circle one and circle one be a mat for circle two. And keep in mind that this is going to automatically turn off the eyeball of both layers. So I'm just gonna turn those back on. Since these are both alpha mats of each other, where they overlap is going to be visible. And when they stop overlapping, nothing is gonna be visible. If we invert this on both layers, you can see that instead of being visible where they overlap, it's going to cut out where they overlap. Once you understand the basics of mats that we covered in this video, you can get creative with using different types of mats on different types of layers and combining mats, masks, and effects together. In the next video in this series, you'll learn how to export or in After Effects terms render your animation into a video file that can be played outside of After Effects. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, happy animating.